In a mining colony prison, dozens of prisoners are forced to work every day while wearing a special gadget on their mouths that prevents them from speaking. When a machine known as the Crusher Pit breaks down, a guard calls prisoner Kai to fix it. In just a few minutes, Kai gets the machine working again. Suddenly, the guards bring in a new prisoner, and everyone is shocked to see Hatch, the general who lost a civil war against General Lang. A former rebel stands up when he sees his general, and a guard immediately punches him for it. The prisoner retaliates with a headbutt, and another prisoner uses the opportunity to punch a guard, throwing him to the floor and beating him with his chains. Sensing a riot coming, another guard activates the crusher pit, reversing it so that the chains around the prisoner's leg drag him toward it. The prisoner soon falls and is shredded to death in seconds. At that moment, Hatch gives a signal to someone hidden, and a guard is suddenly shot from afar. Hatch then teams up with the prisoners to start beating their captors. A guard uses the machine again to activate the other chains, causing more prisoners to fall into the pit to their deaths. Once the guard is distracted, Kai rushes to the machine and tries to stop the massacre, only for the chain to start pulling him as well. He grabs a fallen weapon from the ground and shoots the chain to no avail, so he has no choice but to lose a leg instead. While the chains drag away his limb, Kai hops back to the machine and finally stops it. A last guard tries standing up, and Hatch makes a gun gesture, prompting the hidden sniper to quickly kill him. Then Kai passes out. Sometime later, Kai wakes up in Hatch's ship and discovers he has been given a mechanical prosthetic. Hatch uses a device to remove the prison gadget from Kai's mouth and explains he's been rescuing other rebels to reform his army in counterattack. He knows Kai's father, who used to fight for the rebellion too. Unfortunately, Kai's father has been captured by General Lang and will be executed in a few months on the anniversary of Lang's victory, known as Liberation Day. Hatch knows Kai is an expert pilot, so he offers a deal. Kai must hijack an important enemy ship to retrieve confidential data. If he's successful, Hatch will use that intel to save his father, so Kai agrees. Afterward, Kai is put in suspended animation and smuggled into the enemy ship called the Arrowhead. In the middle of the trip, Kai wakes up early as planned and finds a computer to access the ship's records. On the radio, Hatch explains that all Kai has to do is plug in the device, and the gauntlet will do all the work. As Kai downloads the information, a message pops up on the screen informing him that the system will be vulnerable if he continues. Kai tells Hatch, who assures him that it's only temporary and it'll be fine. A red light turns on, but Kai keeps downloading until a computer announces the systems are offline and there's unstable electromagnetic activity outside. Once the download is done, Hatch confirms that an electromagnetic storm outside is making things unstable, so he asks Kai to send him the files. Kai starts the transfer, but suddenly the ship shakes and gets damaged because of its current vulnerability. The interference makes the transfer fail, and Kai loses contact with Hatch while the ship ejects all the escape pods with the sleeping crew. Kai rushes to the ship's shuttle right before it's expelled too and passes out when it crashes on the nearest planet. When Kai wakes up, he tries to contact Hatch to no avail. He rushes out of the shuttle and sees the pods falling all over the planet, but suddenly he has trouble breathing and goes back inside. The ship's AI, called Reef, warns Kai that the atmosphere is toxic and prolonged exposure may cause paralysis or death. Kai looks through the window and sees the arrowhead slowly falling. He asks Reef for a status report, but Reef requires an employee login to proceed. Reef does say that Kai needs to find a new source of oxygen because the one on the shuttle only has 12% left. Suddenly, a crew member called Oleander sends a message from his pod, asking any survivors to meet at the crash site. Kai grabs an oxygen mask and heads out to check the area. He finds some parts from crashed pods and Oleander's body bleeding on the ground. There's also an intact pod with someone moving inside, so Kai opens it to find Taryn. He shares his oxygen mask and takes her back to the shuttle while Oleander's body is dragged away by a mysterious presence. At the shuttle, Taryn logs into the system and shows suspicion of Kai. Reef does a scan but can't find the arrowhead wreckage, however, Taryn knows the escape pods will leave, so they should find them before they get stuck. Kai follows her after failing again to send Hatch a message. While the duo wanders around, Taryn explains they're actually on a moon, and the planet is the big sphere they see in the sky. Eventually, they find a research probe on the ground, and Taryn is impressed by how much the atmosphere has oxidized the metal. Moments later, they find the crashed arrowhead near a glowing obelisk, which Kai is sure wasn't there before. The duo discusses how to proceed since Kai points out he won't be allowed into the pods. Taryn realizes he works for Hatch and mentions that the general was a cruel man who used to raid colonies before the war, killing thousands of people. However, Kai says it's all propaganda and decides to go back to the shuttle. Kai takes over the pilot seat and asks Reef to activate the flying system but Reef refuses because Kai isn't authorized. Instead, Kai asks for any updates on Hatch, and Reef plays a confessional tape. A video shows Hatch after he lost the war admitting all his crimes, however, Kai notices that Hatch makes a weird gesture and wonders if it's true. He asks Reef for more information, but it's classified. At that moment, Oleander sends a new message saying evacuation will start in 30 minutes. 
Afterward, Kai goes back to Taran and agrees to leave with her regardless of the risk. Taran points out his clothes will give him away. So he starts taking off the main parts of the uniform while something watches from the shadows. Then the duo tries to reach the arrowhead, only for an earthquake to suddenly hit the area. Taran turns around and is shocked to see Kai being dragged away by something into a cave. She grabs his hands and tries pulling him out, however, she isn't strong enough, and Kai is taken away. Scared, Taran runs toward the arrowhead, but it's too late. The pods have left without her. Not knowing what else to do, Taran returns to the shuttle to rest. Four days later, she's exploring the area and finds Kai's gauntlet and axe on the ground. Not far from there, she finds the glowing obelisk and Kai on the ground covered in goo. To her shock, his leg is completely healed. She takes him back to the shuttle and runs some tests, only to discover he's now in a symbiotic relationship with another organism that healed him and made him immune to the toxic environment. Reef keeps trying to offer information, and an annoyed Taran shuts it up, reminding it to only speak when prompted. When Kai finally wakes up, he explains that he doesn't remember anything, only that he was asleep. He feels heavier yet fine. Taran points out she can't fly the shuttle either because she's a biologist, only certain employees had access to that system. The duo decides to check the obelisk, and Kai hits it with his axe, discovering it's actually a soft cocoon. Inside, they find Oleander's body also covered in goo. They carry him back to the shuttle, and when Taran touches Oleander's face with her bare hand, he keeps twitching. Kai pulls out some wires to bring the scanner outside, and they scan Oleander's eyes, which finally gives them access to the flying system. Kai immediately starts getting the engine ready while asking Reef about Liberation Day, learning he still has 76 days before they execute his father. Taran is shocked to hear he won't bring Oleander along and realizes she knows Kai. It turns out he used to work for her father when she was a kid. She points out that the man she knew back then would never leave someone behind to die outside. Oleander finally awakens and throws up. Kai and Taran come out to check on him, and Oleander starts yelling about how Hatch is going to kill them all. Then he picks up a gun from the ground, and Kai jumps to punch him at the same time he shoots. After knocking Oleander out, Kai turns around and discovers Taran is dead. Furious, he starts beating Oleander up. Suddenly, he freezes because he notices he's been shot as well. His body starts wriggling, and he passes out on the ground. Sometime later, Kai wakes up near the obelisk, looking perfectly healed. After seeing mysterious lights flying in the sky, he goes back to the shuttle area and is shocked to see Terrans and Oleander's skeletons. He enters the shuttle and discovers the engine is failing, so he asks Reef for an explanation. It turns out he's been missing for 34 days, during which the engine was left running and eventually burned out. There are 42 days left until Liberation Day. Reef also reveals that while Kai was gone, it detected Oleander's heartbeat in the area, meaning he's being revived just like Kai. Curious, Kai goes to the caves and notices footprints on the sand. When he reaches out, his hand glows like the obelisk, so he decides to go back. For the next few days, Kai searches for crashed pods and takes their parts to fix the engine. He also retrieves Terran's ID badge. Reef plays cartoons for him while he works. One night, Kai wakes up when he hears a strange sound. Suddenly, he starts feeling unbearable pain, and Reef detects an alarming heart rate. Kai leaves the bed only to fall in agony, breaking the repairs he's been doing. Reef points out he may do worse and asks him to leave. Kai runs to the cave and hears the same weird noise before a terrifying monster appears. He immediately runs out and falls to his knees in pain as weird limbs come out from his back, making him pass out. Sometime later, Kai wakes up covered in goo again and returns to the shuttle. He concludes fear and pain trigger the transformation and wants to get rid of the creature inside him. Frustrated, he starts punching the engine and mentions Liberation Day, desperate to save his father. Unfortunately, Reef informs him that he slept for a long time and Liberation Day happened two days ago. A crying Kai goes out and falls on the ground, accepting his fate is to be stuck here forever Tay. Three years later, Kai is still living on the moon. He's trained his body, and now whenever he accidentally hurts himself, he can stop the transformation before it happens. In the sky. He can still see the mysterious lights flying. One night, he sees something glowing inside a helmet and gets excited. He brings it outside and frees a firefly, which joins others of its kind to make a beautiful light show. When he returns to the shuttle, he finds footprints outside and discovers Taran's badge is gone. As he discusses the situation with Reef, the AI shares a theory. It thinks Oleander has the same symbiotic relationship as Kai's, meaning he's been revived but is stuck in the monster form. Reef thinks death is part of Kai's life cycle now, the bodies die, but their consciousnesses live on in new replicated bodies. When Reef asks Kai to self-delete so it can study the body to find a cure, Kai refuses, saying it's just a theory and his revival in a new body isn't guaranteed. Afterward, Kai searches for the Oleander monster and is shocked to find one of his dead bodies. He brings it back to the shuttle and puts it up as bait. When the monster comes close enough, Kai comes out and finally shoots it. While hearing roaring in the distance, he cuts off a piece of the monster and brings it to Reef who scans it to confirm it is indeed Oleander's DNA. It also cross-references dates and points out that the roaring could be heard every time Oleander or Kai died, which means something out there reacts to their deaths.
It sounded like a mother mourning her young and probably activated the revival process. Kai doesn't understand much because he isn't a biologist, and hearing that word prompts Reef to mention Taryn. When Kai authorizes the AI to share information, it plays a recording of the night of the shooting. It turns out Taryn had been unconscious, not dead, and she escaped after Kai died. The skeleton Kai found later had been his own. Kai gets angry because Reef never mentioned that Taryn was alive in three years, so Reef has to remind him it can only share information when prompted. Now Kai has a new purpose, finding Taryn. He takes parts from the shuttle and builds a body for Reef so it can follow him around during the search. After lots of wandering, they make it to the caves, and Reef tries scanning the tunnels. However, there's strong electromagnetic interference that messes with its system. They decide to follow that weird signal, and Kai starts smelling something strange. Since it's dark, he asks Reef for something bright, and the AI plays a rather loud video. Kai has to run to disconnect the sound, but it's too late, the creature comes out of the shadows and attacks. As Kai dodges the attack, Reef gets tackled instead, and the monster goes after Kai next. It quickly bites his arm, and Kai uses the chance to hit it with his axe, killing it. At that moment, the same roar echoes in the cave. Kai follows a glow at the back and finds his original body next to Oleander's. After the initial shock, he covers Oleander's face and suffocates him out of mercy. This kills his beast as well. Now Kai should do the same to his body, but he can't. Instead, he retrieves his prosthetic leg and goes back to searching for Terran with Reef. Eventually, they find the spot where Reef last sensed Terran's heartbeat, and Kai can tell something launched on that ground, which means she managed to escape. At that moment, Reef's screen starts failing again, and Kai realizes his prosthetic leg is causing it. He checks inside and finds a pulse grenade, meaning Hatch asked him to send the files through the gauntlet because he never intended to pick him up. Suddenly, the lights in the sky start crashing to the ground, and Kai rushes to check on them only to discover it's the escape pods, which doesn't make sense because they left three years ago and he saw them in the sky every day. This prompts Reef to share some classified information. This moon is under an experiment for time dilation. Time passes quickly here because the general wants a way to manufacture weapons and soldiers fast. Years pass on the moon while outside, it's only been minutes, at that moment, Kai sees a ship approaching, so he gets the research probe ready. The ship lands, and Hatch comes out with a guard. He did receive Kai's messages, and it took him just 20 minutes to come, but for Kai, it was years. Kai realizes it was Hatch who shot down the arrowhead in the pods because he wants to use this moon for his own army. He tells Hatch all the information is in the shuttle, but Hatch knows he's lying and knocks him out. When Kai wakes up, He's chained up in the shuttle and discovers they have Taran too. When Hatch threatens to kill her, Kai tells him he hid all the intel inside the research probe. Then Hatch goes looking for the probe, and once he finds what he wants, he activates the grenade in Kai's leg. However, Kai expected this and put the grenade inside the probe, which now explodes. At that moment, Kai's body starts glowing, and he fully transforms into the monster form. The guard tries to shoot him down, but Taran tackles him to stop him. As Kai gets too close to Taran, Reef appears outside and calls for him. The creature bursts out covered in blood and destroys Reef at the same time Taran comes out, meaning the blood belongs to the guard. With sweet words, Taran reaches out to the creature and tells him he can control it. The beast steps back, and soon Kai returns to his human form. He returns to Taran, and together they grieve for Reef. Suddenly, a heavily wounded Hatch appears and starts shooting at Kai before stabbing him. Kai uses his monster strength to grab Hatch by the neck and allows a creature limb to come out to kill him. Afterward, the duo manages to reactivate Reef, and they escape in Hatch's ship. Meanwhile, near Hatch's body, a roar can be heard. 